Alright, so in this video, we are going to go to a bookstore to go hunting for math books. I have to keep this short because I have to turn the GPS on so I can find the bookstore. The bookstore is called Magus Books. It's supposed to be like this legendary bookstore in Seattle. And I'm pretty sure they have math books. So we're going to go and I'm going to try to get as many math books uh, as I can afford. I don't have that much money, but um, I'm just going to go see what they have because it's an opportunity and it's supposed to be a really epic bookstore. I'm out of light, so I thought I could record a little bit more. So the last time I went to one of these bookstores was in Oregon. I went to Powell's bookstore, which was amazing. I don't expect this to be as big as Powell's, but I'm hoping they have some books. Powell's does have a lot of books and I actually never really posted that video. So if I can find the files, I will try to post that video because that was a good video, but they don't really allow recording in the store. So I'm going to try to be really careful about recording in the store. You know, I'm, I'm in 800 to feet, private. slight right to stay on Northeast and 45th like street. Yes. So hopefully you can hear me and that didn't ruin the video. So I'm going to stop this because I'm almost there and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. The moral is do not try to record while you're using GPS because I got lost, but we're still on our way there and we will get there. We will get there. Yeah, we're almost there. I think I know where I am. I'm pretty sure this is by the University of Washington campus. And yeah, I see like all the signs. And the In a quarter mile, turn right onto Northeast actually, Pacific uh, Place. A really good school uh, for mathematics. There's my GPS again. So yeah, here we go. I'm pretty sure this is the University of Washington campus because there's like students everywhere and there's really big buildings, but the store is up ahead on the left. So we're almost there. The last time I went to a bookstore like this, I was recognized in public. Someone screamed my name, he's math sorcerer. And I was, I was, I was going up the stairs and uh, it was really weird. So hopefully, I mean, I don't think anyone's gonna recognize me, but yeah, I'll just uh, try to like blend in uh, with all the other math people, if, if there's math people there. So you can see, yeah, there's tons of people everywhere. Almost there. We are almost there, my friends. So it's up ahead on the left. I'm supposed to um, make a left on 42nd Street, and then I'm assuming I will uh, be able to find parking. So let's do that. Just gotta make sure I don't like cause any accidents. Lots of people on the road, lots of people um, out, I guess, because it's a weekday, right? So people are in class, it's like the middle of the day. I don't know what time it is, but like, it's after 12 p.m. here in Seattle, Washington on the West Coast, so. Nice day, uh, it's not super sunny, but it's not like super dark. Like At the light, the turn left onto Northeast 42nd Street, right. then turn right. I'm gonna, I think we're here. I think that's it. We can make a left. Ah, oh, there it is, we buy books. I don't know if you turn right, that. then your destination will be on the left. I think I can park right here. Well, I don't know, I'm terrible at city parking. Let's see if I can find a better parking spot. Your destination is on the left. The moral of the story is do not be scared to parallel park. I could have had a parking spot, but I am working my way there. So I'm headed back to the bookstore. Parking is pretty tough there. It's tough here and there's a lot of people. So you just have to be really, really careful. And yeah, no turn on red, so I have to wait a minute. But I'm hoping I can find a parking spot. There was a parking spot right in front of the bookstore and I chickened out and I didn't take it. So I guess I can park in 1000 feet, turn right onto Northeast 43rd street. But I want to get a little bit closer. I guess I can't park here. So I think I have to turn right here. Okay. I parked right across the bookstore and I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to park here. I'm not sure. So I'm going to make this quick. I'm going to go in and try to snag as many math books as I can. And hopefully I don't get a ticket. Um, so yeah, I'll try to be discreet in there. And I'm so excited to check out this bookstore because it's supposed to be really good. It's supposed to be, it's not as big as Powell's, but like this is pretty much the university. There's students everywhere. All right, I'm gonna go in. All right, we're here. I'm in the store. Topology by Willard. Oh, I have this book. This is a good one.
So the selection isn't huge, but they do have quite a bit. And I've picked out a couple that I like already. All right, I've looked a lot and I found a few. I've picked out like four or five books, but there's not a huge selection here. Not as big as I thought. And a lot of these books I already own. For example, I already have uh, Number Three by Andrews, which is a great book. Um, I already have a lot of books. So I did find some good ones though. And they're here. And we'll take a look at them later. So I've got this one here, which I've, I've never seen. I'm gonna save that one for last. Picked up a couple Shams, because I can't find mine. And yeah, I should get out of here though, because the parking is not great. But there's a book here, which I'll show you later in the video, which I'm really excited about. All right, I did it. I went into Magus Books and I got some math books. The most exciting one I got is uh, a graduate level book. Let me just show you really quick. This is the one I'm really excited about. And I got it mainly for just myself. I really like abstract algebra. It's called Algebra, an approach via module theory. So I'm very excited about this book. I did not know this book existed. And when I saw it, I'm like, oh, I'm getting this for the knowledge in this book. Uh, maybe I'll make a video on the book later, but it's got groups, rings, modules and vector spaces, linear algebra, matrices over PIDs. Those are uh, principal uh, ideal domains, bilinear and quadratic forms, topics and module theory. Uh Oh, this car is. Oh, no, don't hit me, dude. I got to back up. Hold on. Oh, he, he got out. He got out. He was parallel parked. Um, yeah, so I, I am very excited. Very excited. Um, it's not they, they didn't really have the selection that I expected them to have. You know, I thought they might have, you know, like a bigger selection, like more books. But uh, no, it's pretty small. Like compared to Powell's, you, you cannot compare it to Powell's. And I will try to find that footage of Powell's. Um, Powell's is really big. That's why I got noticed in Powell's. Powell's is like two stories. It's huge. Uh, there's people everywhere. I'm going to pull up a little bit because I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to park here. Um, so yeah. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to start driving. All right. So we're out of here. So that was an experience. Um, I think I know how to get home and, uh, yeah, look at all the people everywhere, right? There's people everywhere. Um, so just students, right? Because I think today is, oh geez, today's Tuesday, right? Yeah, Tuesday. And uh, it's like the middle of the day. So people are like, you know, going in between classes and stuff. Really cool store though, really cool. Continue vibe. on 15th Avenue Northeast for two miles. Sorry about the GPS. Uh, really cool vibe. I don't know, just a very like chill, very chill. I got a very chill vibe from the store. They were playing like classical music and like, I don't know, the guy who, um, you know, who checked me out. Uh, he seemed really cool. Just a very, a very cool place. I think it's a great store. I would definitely recommend uh, checking it out. They do have a lot of math books. They have some, but again, a lot of them I already have. A lot of them are for beginners. Um, they're books that I don't really need. Overall, I think it was uh, a worthy trip, even, even just for this book alone. And I picked up some Shams books and I'm pretty sure I have some of them, but I have so many books that like, I don't know where they are, right? Like I just have so many math books. So yeah, I love local bookstores. There's something about going to an actual bookstore because they can buy books online, right? Like on Amazon, you can buy books. Um, but there's something about like supporting your, your local bookstore that I think is, is kind of magical, you know? I don't know. Maybe I'm just a, a math, uh, I don't know what I am, but I love bookstores. I love math books. Yeah, this is this is a graduate level book. So maybe I'll, I'll work out some problems from this book and put them on the channel. Um, the problem with you know working out problems like this is like most people don't understand them. There's a very small subset of the population that's really interested uh, in this material. So I, I mainly bought it for just for myself, you know, like if it's a Friday night and I'm sitting there at home by myself and I'm bored and I can pick, take out the book and just, you know, read about modules or just do a little bit of math for fun, you know? Um, so it's kind of nice. Yeah, cool place, really cool vibe. I got a very, very like good vibe from, from this area from, and this is not my first time here on this campus. I've been to the University of Washington before. I've been to the, uh, they have a, I'm pretty sure they have a library in the math department because I'm pretty sure I've been there. And I've been to the math department there uh, when they didn't have classes. And it was kind of, uh, I don't know, it's like most math departments, right? It's like a dark dungeon. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about if you're a math major. You know, the law students have the fancy building. The math students have, uh, they have the dungeon. So yeah, yeah. Good experience though. I got some other books too, let me show you. 
So I got a linear algebra. I'm pretty sure I already have this one, but I can't find my copy. This might be a first edition too. This one was really cheap. And then I picked up this one. I don't know if I have this specific one. I might have the probability and statistics one. So I got this. And also got another Shams set theory. This one I already have, but I can't find my copy. And the other book I got, this one I almost didn't buy. It's an undergraduate level book, but it's got some pretty hard stuff. It's called Elements of Algebra, Geometry, Numbers, and Equations. So it's got some topics that I'm kind of interested in. I wasn't like super interested in all the topics. So I put it away then I'm like, I do have the money, let me just buy it, right? So, let me, so I bought it, I'm excited about it. It's by Stillwell. I don't know if it's a good book or not. Um, I know the Shaman's books I bought are good. I don't know about the other ones. The module one looks, looks really, really good. It looks really, really, really good. Maybe I'll make more bookstore videos um, if I go to more bookstores. Again, I'll look for that footage of Powell's. Um, you know, there's not that many bookstores that actually have math books, right? That's the thing. Like, if you go to, like, a new bookstore, like a Barnes & Noble, they're only going to have new books. But to find old books, it's a little bit harder. Some of my... Uh, people always ask me where I get math books. Some of my best math and physics books have come from estate sales. I used to live in a place where there was lots of retired people. And when there's lots of retired people, this is going to sound really dark, but um, people die. Right? Sounds, sounds terrible, right? But they do. And when they die, um, they have estate sales. And sometimes these people are mathematicians. Sometimes they're physicists. For example, I went to an estate sale of a famous nuclear physicist who happened to be uh, the first black radar man in the U.S. Navy. His name was Augustus Prince. And I was able to acquire a very large portion of his, of his collection. And I do have regrets because I could have gotten more, but I only had a few dollars in my pocket that day. I had to go to the bank and it was late and it was far from the bank and I should have made the extra effort to pick up his entire collection and and I didn't and then it turns out that like months later I returned to the estate sale people trying to find the books but apparently they had been they had been tragically sold off to like some person who buys and resells books you know so I missed out I did I did acquire uh, some of his books uh, and a lot of them are really rare um, so that was that was an experience. The moral of that story was whenever you find rare books on the streets, like whether it be an estate sale or a bookstore, buy it. That's, that's kind of why I bought this one. I was like, do I really want this book? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, let me just buy it because if I go home, I'm going to be like, oh, I should have bought that book. So I'm happy I bought it. I don't have to go home and have regret that I didn't get it. Um, and it's probably, I mean, it's got a lot of content in it. So pretty happy about that. Let me know what you think. Do you like bookstores? Do you go to bookstores? Check out my courses. Check out my books. There are links are in the description. I uh, can't think of anything else to say. I'm going to drive home and then I'm going to hit the gym. Stay strong, my friends. Hey, I'm back. I decided to keep recording. I still have uh, a while before uh, I get home. So I thought I would record a little bit more. But they gave me a bag, which is pretty cool. It doesn't say the name of the bookstore, though, so I'm a little disappointed. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it was... It was a good bookstore. Yeah, I tried to record again, but the GPS shows up in the video, uh, which is kind of annoying. Um, but I just wanted to say the, the really cool thing about math books is that to me, not only are they collectibles, right? Because you can you can collect you can collect math books, right? But they're collectibles that provide knowledge. You know, I've been a collector of things my entire life. I don't know if you all know this, and I've talked about it in other videos. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I collected coins, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, but, um, my dad was a coin collector. And so he taught me how to collect coins when I was like 10 years old or younger. And so I've always, I've always been a collector. I collected Magic the Gathering cards. I collected baseball cards, comic books, uh, coins, and, and now math books. And out of all the collectibles, uh, well, I do like Magic the Gathering cards, <laughs> but out of all the collectibles, uh, I think math books are special because they provide knowledge. It's like a collectible that you can pick up and, and read later, you know? And a lot of times too, like like some of these math books, sure, I'm not gonna go home and read them right away, but the fact that I have them with me 
gives me the option. It gives me the opportunity to read them. And that's that's something I think you should be aware of. Like if you're, say you're thinking about getting an advanced book on math, right? And you think like, oh, well, I'm not gonna understand it yet because I don't know that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? You're allowed to buy the book even if it's too hard for you. You're, you're allowed to pick up that book, try to read it and not understand, right? And in fact, that's part of math, I think too. Like going through books that are above your level and below your level, right? Remember, there's, there's breadth and there's depth. So anything you can absorb, even from those really, really hard math books, I think, is is totally worth it. So yeah, anyways, I probably should stop this video and pay attention. Take care, everyone. Stay strong.